So this is, um, if you haven't been here in, in, in the last years, you probably know about thermostat. And this is basically a project of um, It's a monitoring platform for open uh, and for Linux system. Today, we won't really speak about uh, the monitoring aspects of, of thermostat. I want to show you uh, a demo of thermostat running. I want to show you uh, how to use thermostat for uh, visualizing information regarding the job from machine. So I hope you are not disappointed by that. Uh, what I will show you still is what we are preparing for developers, because this is a, a platform um, that is, is, is supposed to be extensible. Uh, by you, so people should be able to write plugins, and we, we got some, some feedback uh, during the years, and we figured out that it could be interesting to allow people to write more than just plugins for Thermosa, or actually actual application based on Thermosa. That's more or less what you can already do with Eclipse and NetBeans, if you want. Uh, it's just that we still have to focus it particularly on, on uh, data processing aspect of things. So every decision we make goes in the direction of maybe easier to visualize information anyway. So there are still differences if you want. So first, uh, mandatory legal slide. Uh, we may speak about things that we don't know if we will ever end up in any product, but anyway, this is what we do. We do shape the future, so we are happy to speak about it. Um, I could not copy actually the words for legal reasons. <laughs> um, I hope you can see any. Actually, you probably don't because I don't know if you can close the lights in some way. I don't dare to touch it anyway. Um, as, it, as I was saying at the beginning, Thermostat is a platform for uh, basically for monitoring things. Um, you can uh, use it for tuning, set an aspect of the driver from the machine. Maybe if uh, yeah, there is some uh, JNX enabled. Uh, uh, tuning parameter, whatever. Um, is, it allows you to profile, it allows to monitor, um, it tells you if something is wrong, it has been detected by running your virtual machine. If there is something wrong, there are uh, heuristics that, that, that warn you up uh, for all those cases. It's particularly for OpenGDK. Uh, we are really, so we could actually tune for OpenGDK totally, like adding a code to OpenGDK for, for making thermostat um, you know, more tuned to OpenGDK itself. We don't really do that. When, when this is the case, actually, patches go upstream, so they don't re remain in, in, in our uh, implementation of OpenGDK, which ships with Red, for instance. And still, this is actually all uh, uh, code that is out in the open and, and it works. To some degree, also work with closed GDKs, so for instance, over the GDK, because it's, it's really using all the standard interfaces. Um, this, the current status of things, we, we just recently released uh, a version one of four. <coughs> uh, every every, every uh, version of this major release has. Uh, Code name that there is a literary references. We use it to have literary references as a well, uh, final release. But this is when we go actually how the things read. So <laughs> we're storing the, the name Sony for major release now. Um, you, you can find it uh, as an RPM package in, in, in RHEL, uh, in the in the SCL to the two, and this is some, actually something that, that should be out soon, so you, you probably will find it in, 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 in the short term. Or if you don't have to but you can also just compile it from terms of sources. It is OSGI based. Um, for the most part, we try to get OSGI as an as a implementation data, but obviously there is a, a way to uh, plug new code and pieces of yeah, functionality, and, and this is done by OSGI. Um, so until now, this is the one of four versions, so this is actually code that is, that is being uh, shipped in production. 
we are all the presentation levels of the user interface. Uh, this is a distributed tool, so we ask, yes, a, yeah, it has an agent that the user runs in, in the host and then plug some information, maybe some, some uh, yeah, agent code into the JM for uh, analysis, and then there is the, uh, the, the storage layer, and then there is the user interface. So we're speaking now about the user interface side of things. Um, yeah, it's based on all the view controller implementation, pretty typical stuff. Uh, yes, data sources, that, that those are basically the things that you, you get information from. So in, in this case, we're speaking about Java virtual machine, maybe something about the garbage collector, but it can be something from coming from the system, uh, uh, generally speaking. And this is how it looks when it's actually running. Uh, this is exactly a wonderful version. You see there is all the virtual machine on the side and here there is some information about the host in this case. Uh, it's doing some profiling there. You probably don't see all the data, but it's not really important. But it's pretty complex user interface. You do use a lot of uh, custom made widgets and uh, tools and, and so forth. Another screenshot, this is the same session, so it's still doing stuff that was done before. But now if you, you can click on, on a virtual machine and, and you can see the, the trades and some information in the trades and so forth. This is how it looks when you take out all the plugins. It's very boring, and actually they even added this after the time just to make some color, because what you really have is a completely white window. It's actually white, not even gray. And what is this actually? This is the idea. Uh, running an application for thermostat means that you can basically use it as a tool, as a, as a it's a completely empty tool for writing your thing. So the idea was where we have different goals. The tools that we are actually using internal internal is the form of public API so that you can plug um, all those small things and plugins inside this menu and create your own application. So what we will going to see today is actually one of those use cases. Um, this is mostly stuff that we're targeting for Thermostat 2.0. Should be probably out in one year from now. Um, the, news, the new stuff that we're doing is the platform API, which is exactly what is taking care of all the information coming from the plugin. So it, it's actually taking away all the, the tasks from the developers to write uh, management code from the views and models and controllers and so forth and actually extracting all those ideas so that, that you can only you only need to write small components and then the thermostat will handle them. This is the same way as if you would actually write a plugin for thermostat. Then there is a data system API that will help basically this allows people to do uh, transformation on their data types and most of those transformations are actually fixed. At some point you have a bunch of things you want to happen from your data source until it gets presented. So what you do is to write a lot of code that, that handle the, the various things that happens a bit. Maybe, uh, I don't know, you, you get just one time and one sample from somewhere and then you start collecting other samples and then you put them together and then those samples have a lot of information, but you are interested, for instance, in visualizing the, the trade information rather than, than everything else that comes to the trade sample with the trade. So all those things can be actually uh, be quite uh, time consuming, but, uh, but at the end of the day, they are always the same. So if you figure it out, it's, it's, it's much easier if we got kind of have a standardized pipeline for processing all this information and give me on, on the data that comes from, from the various data sources, something like a timestamp. Uh, and now, of course, it's all about visualizing this stuff, so lots and lots of visualization tools and new yeah, chart style, new components, and so forth. Uh, that, that was a lot of feedback that, that we had from, from the one that's series that they are usually backward compatible so we cannot really just take out things but we are more you know less conservative than open GDK where you know 2.0 we just really remove all the stuff that we don't like anymore. Um, 
one of those things were super for the Eclipse client. Uh, when we started, we thought it was important to have uh, Thermostar working as a plugin inside Eclipse, but uh, we also wanted some people to use as a swing tool, and yeah, it, there was a lot of clutter coming from 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 those two different implementations. We just, you know, uh, the really also there was no real real proper life cycle super, which is the most important thing. So you want to be well if you, if you have a, a ever have experience on, on, on mobile development, you, you understand that quite well. So like, when there is something happening on your phone, for instance, you have uh, a bunch of things that get, uh, yeah, a bunch of elements that, that, that get sent you. Like, it's like the view is on screen now, the view is moving, and, and so forth. This doesn't really happen with regular frameworks in, in, in you know, in, on the desktop side, you usually don't really have things that are handling for you. Uh, so you, 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 you really have just the bare bone things. Like if you want to be informed when there is some component visible, you need to attach listener to that. But there is no uh, abstraction uh, behind that. So you, you don't really have a controller or, or a model object that reacts to the same kind of events in, 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 in a way uh, that makes framework and so forth. I've been participating in, in one of those frameworks, it's um, JSR. Um, it's a little bit stuck at this time, it's uh, 3, 344, I don't remember the, the number here, but it's supposed to give some, some sort of general framework for all the, the desktop implementation. Um, anyway, there is another problem with the whole series, is that the plugins are definitely there, but the API is not actually um, clean. There are lots of rules based on moral convention actually being enforced. So we want to do this, all this, this stuff. As I say, we just removed all the big clutter, the big clutter. Still OSGI based. We are using actually um, <coughs> Felix annotation, so we don't use any more activators and a lot of very complicated code is always the same, but has to be tested. Now it's all based on annotations. Again, plugins are first class components. They're still based on this model view controller, but the reality is that, well, we will see that in, in the next slide, that everything here is actually really a controller. So what happens is that the view is actually a presenter is, is actually controlling the actual view that is a swing component. And then the controller is more like the orchestrator of everything. Um, the life cycle is, is defined for plugins and for the applications. So if you're running, if you're writing an application in terms of you can actually get events from, from the system telling you in what state the application is, how you can react to the which makes a lot of, I mean, the main thing is the testing is is wonderful in this kind of environment. Um, yeah, that's just for me a very quick slide about the life cycle events you get from the application, you have the creation, the initialization phase, and it can be either start or stop. There's a lot of the arrows here and there, but I probably didn't see I didn't see that from it anyway. Uh, and then at some point uh, the application closes or crashes and it gets destroyed. Um, for MVC it's a little bit complicated because we have actually three of those pieces rather than just one and everything happens in the realm of threads so the threads are actually separated from each other so it's not like you are blocking the UI by default if you are running some task in the, in the, um, in the controller is actually working on the application thread if you run as a task and the AIU is in a, in a different thread. So communication within the two is actually um, a bit easier from one thread, but obviously you need to know uh, what thread is what, otherwise you, you may have um, not any issues. Java A makes having a lot easier, we don't use it. So, <coughs> Um, yeah, this is a little bit easier to understand, probably, in code, or what are the, the various states of the views and controllers of the uh, relationship. 
Um, it's really just basically a state machine. But the, the most important thing is the is about using the right component that are reusable so that you can just try one, for instance, if you have like a widget for searching some information. You just will write one widget, they always uh, behave in the same way, it's controlled in the same way, only the information needs to uh, be passed in, in the way of, of the model of it. So, and by standardizing on the models as well, then this also becomes a lot easier, especially for, for testing purposes. Um, and you just have to focus on the functionality itself, and you don't have to worry about uh, when it's visible, when it's not visible, there are just metals about that, and they are all coded by the platform. So testing what happens when your view is visible, it's just a matter of calling the visible uh, metal that the platform will actually go for you, but you can call it manually for testing. Um, yeah, again, this is everything. Uh, it's really a controller here. Uh, even the model is actually life cycle, so there is an initialization phase, there is a um, uh, yeah, starting phase when things can get connected. Uh, but of course, especially for the model, the model can be shared by, by, by different uh, user controllers. So there is some, still a lot of level of control in the end of the developer in this case. While view and controllers have less, uh, they, are, they are more uh, dependent on each other. Um, the idea is to always have um, yeah, metal running from one side to the other. So we, we actually added a lot of <coughs> event ending code. You may realize that some of this this, this stuff, especially you know, with probably a high tier, you know, there are properties. So we, we kind of added properties in the style of JavaFX properties for a lot of house wing components. So I actually went so far as in re-implementing some of the uh, <coughs> binding and, and, and probability binding stuff that you find in JavaFX because this is really, really nice to, to use. And so when you have a property, you can bind from one component to another. Actually, everybody gets notified by the same uh, element. Um, so things you should find, you will find in the new implementation are very easy for developers. So the drive management, uh, as I say, haven't protected uh, processing. We do have <coughs> we do have caching support, so it's possible to say restore the the status of a view or or a controller uh, from file system or in memory. Uh, then animation framework, which is the nicest thing here, um, sounds a little bit old-fashioned today to speak about animation and swing, but Unfortunately, still a lot of people stuck on Swing and we cannot use JavaFX. And it's interesting to have a, a proper animation framework that, that you know, for, for small things really, because animation should never be abusive. But it's nice that, that you actually have uh, in terms of a proper framework, so you don't need to have on third party libraries and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, then layout management is also interesting because a lot of those components actually they have to interact between each other and this is this has been always notoriously difficult for you know, swing especially painting uh, you know outsider bounds actually we do a lot of tricks to lay out and so this is actually very simple from programming point of view and all the data have been uh, so we basically try to get all the I can do the, the, the weekend with minimal efforts. Um, that's all about the user interface experience, but of course, we are actually really visualizing information. So what happens here? Again, we want to give context. So Thermostat now is aware of what happens. <coughs> actually, you may be aware the first time something new happens for Thermostat. You write a small component, small plugin, and from that point on, the term is uh, the application knows about what is a timestamp and so the context around that. This is important because it, it allows you to 
for instance, visualize the timestamp information always in the same way, or change the way this is visualized on screen based on, on the meaning of this timestamp information, which is all the context that, that is needed. But then it doesn't change anymore, it's always the same. Uh, so processing data becomes really just a stream. And again, you can, you can start doing small pieces of execution that can be reused across various uh, contexts. As I said before, we have a lot of ideas from JavaFX, just store all the ideas, we re-implemented them in a way when, when it made sense. If we could have used the JavaFX, we would have done it. But you can recognize that, you know, maybe it's just very small writing, but there are, you know, <coughs> change listener with for observable uh, observable values that means uh, properties that can change and they observe it and then they are bound to each other and, and they get validated. Um, one typical example is to probably um, the opacity in uh, the component from its parent to the child. <coughs> You don't really want to do that always in the in the in the, in the uh, layout management or, or by overriding the head <coughs> in your component because that would be a mess. And then in, anyway, you want to have some control when you actually want the same uh, translucency or not. So this is easier to just bind the property. If you want to honor the your parent translucency setting, you just bind this property and then the uh, repay manager would do the magic with our special components. Um, then, this is actually the last part of this, and then we will have a small demo. <coughs> the data processing, so all this information we have, the context around it, the data, and so forth, they actually useful for processing this, uh, this image, um, this, yeah, this, this data, and also for visualizing it. Obviously, the graph is one of the most important data types for all, you know. And we decided to add tools for layouting and visualization of graphs, and do all sorts of traverse of stuff, as topological sorting, preferences, textures, and so forth. <coughs> we also added geometric support. This is actually more about visualization. But and you already can find it in the form of course. So uh, basically it's possible to have a clear representation of your memory uh, in yeah in your application, which is really really nice. No other tool doesn't. Um, I my idea is it really comes from programs like you know in the music business you basically have those mixers and then you have the plugins and the pipelines. This this is actually what what happens here. And it allows you to do stuff like <coughs> you get a producer, which is your data source in work, then you make the first transformation and seven transformation and you find out that there is <coughs> sorry some component that actually has multiple uh, inputs. So maybe this is a mixer. So it's Let's say that those are two images, and the task of this company is how to blend the two images. Yeah, so this has two images. And then finally, pass everything to the consumer. Of course, if you think about it, this is the same example but in code. Uh, it's something that we will see in the demo now. Of course, if you think about that, <coughs> it's all the information that, that actually get visualizing in a typical monitoring application like thread analysis or like, I don't know, the garbage collection information. So when you have files in the data, then this makes, you know, the whole picture. <coughs> I'm about to die. So, this is thermostat. We know nothing about monitoring. But using the actual implementation of the pipeline, I really write this, brought this, this, this demo in one week and a half ago. 
was the, the idea was to actually test out how the thermostability AI behaves in a real case where you actually want to write an application that has nothing to do with, with the data processing other than the fact that the data is actually images, so it's actually processing something. So your data sources are still images. Your pipeline for processing is actually something that happens on the images itself. Before going to that, I want to show you the data. here is that the controller is basically loading those images from, from the file system and it's not really interrupting the user interface. It's doing under the roof. But obviously this is not what to say, but the nice thing is that in code, in that control is that things are very, very strictly separated. So you actually really write a code for this time. You just write the component for loading the images. You plug there and then thermostat takes care of when you load it. And then this is my daughter, mandatory feature, and some more effects, and then some data processing pipeline. And you can see here the output from, from the processing pipeline is basically telling, yes, we have an image from the source. Uh, in this case, what I did was to change in, in, uh, in uh, black and white, so there is an average in gray square filter that just calculates uh, the average for, for the three color components by the trivial stuff, and, and then it passes to the next level. And if you see that, now I, I only started the average in filter. In my pipeline, there are actually uh, three filters. One is for scaling the image. In this case, it's uh, size to fit uh, the content on the window. And then there are those two here. <coughs> this funny icon, this other thing, icon, this actually is for, <coughs> sorry, is for um, color, color inversion, if I remember correctly. <coughs> yeah, it's a negative for the image. So you see now, the buffer image, this is the source buffer image, you can see some address, then it's passed to the exit, to the negative filter. It's actually a different, so the, the input source is the same as before because it's the same, but then what goes on the next level <laughs> is a different. Bit, um, image so as we transform it in this case replace it. <coughs> if I look at some of the changes, okay. then the others <coughs> the others is the same. So you get this and then this is passive and filter support computer here until the last step, which is always the starting and at this point. The input image is the same, but then it would be transformed at this point. Um, and then you would have another first image here. This is just really a trivial example, but it showcase what, what the and again, this is another example. You can see resizing things. This is about just layouting magic. You know, I mean, it's funny because, of course, in 2016, that that stuff should be granted, and we should really be using JFX, but we don't have JFX. Okay. So, if you have questions, I'm not sure.